Seven. Uh, which of the following has a large onset cluster? What do we mean by onset? The beginning, right? So, uh, we'll look at the beginning of the word. And see, onset, cluster, the, the correct answer is D. Why? Because there are two consonants, S and T, three, not, not even two, three, S, T, R. So, string. See? It's a cluster, it's a group of consonants at the beginning of a word. Kelimenin başında onset girişte başlangıç ses zarfı. İki tane de hatta üç tane. So it can be uh, more than two. It's called onset cluster. Consonant cluster. It can be two or more than two. Okay. Now there are three consonants. Set, set, riff. Right? But for example, check. Uh, the option C, kiss, is only one, right? You, you do not, uh, okay, when you check this kind of words, you just check the pronunciation, the sounds that you hear, okay? With kiss, consonant, vowel, and consonant, correct? But with string, string, there are three consonants at the beginning of the word. Okay. Eight, free morphem, bad morphem, equals a word, and that is, okay, which of the following word doesn't apply to this formula? Of course, or, why? Because it's just, okay, one free morphem, and there are no, no bad morphem. Whereas, if you check the other uh, options, reducible, reduce, okay, free morphem, and then, Above, there is a bad morphine. Memorial, memory, memorial. Fact, factual. Arrive, arrive. So one free morphine and one bad morphine. But oral is just one morphine, free morphine. Okay? So, uh, nine. Alright. Yes. Yes. So you gotta uh, learn the terms and this kind of things and, uh, very carefully because you may have you may have to answer these kind of questions in KPSS, right? All right. So uh, in Akan language, mula no mula. Tagalog language, tawak, tumawak, tatawak. So, uh, which of the following is true according to the example above? The first, uh, the, the correct answer, both languages use reduplication for inflection. How? Okay, how? Let's check. The singular, the singular form of plants in a Lacano language is mula. When you want to make the plural form of it, you say mula. Right? Mumula. You, you add another, uh, you add a mu, you reduplicate, you copy it. Mumula. And then, when we, uh, uh, tawak means call, to call, in uh, Tagalog language, correct? Yes. So, tumawak, tatawak. Check tatawak, when you say I will call, you redup reduplicate ta at the beginning. Tawak, ta tawak, right? You add another ta, you redu reduplicate it, you copy it. So this is also an uh, intellectual moment because it shows a grammatical function. And mula uh, mula also uh, shows a grammatical function. That means both languages use reduplication copying uh, a morphem for inflection. What about this one? Just But this is just for that one, for tense inflection. Yes, but I'm not true for that one. So you have to, you have to combine both sentences. Yeah, but the question says that which of 
example. It is not an infix. It is a read application. The infix means you bring a different affix and you put it in the middle of the word and you produce it. Okay. We have a different school in Spain, Tuvalok, Tuvalok, Tuvalok, UN. This is where? In Tuvalok, Tuvalok. So, yes. uh, I think uh, E is the correct answer. No, we use E in the Tuvalok, Tuvalok, Tuvalok. It's not E. It's not the collection. No, no, no. It is the imperative. There is no differentiation of that. Yeah, but for the other one, still Tatawak, when you say Tatawak, this is I will call. I will call, you re-duplicate. Yes, but... Tumawak is not a tense. It's imperative. It is not tense. And there is no infix here. Okay? If it were infix, it would be like this. Tawak, Tamawak. Uh, this is tumawak. It's different. That means when you when you uh, add an index, you shouldn't change the first and the last part of the sentence. You just put an index inside, like hallelujah. It says hallelujah, hallelujah. But you insert bloody between hallelujah. You say hallelujah. Uh, question 10. This uh, prescriptive approach. We talked about this before as well. Do you remember? Prescriptive? Yeah. Okay. Did you, but you should have read it, right? I think you've read it. Yeah. In English? Come on, I don't know. Okay, go ahead. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's Okay. Let's check the words to describe. What does describe mean? It means define. You define something. Okay, you describe it, you define it. For example, can you describe that man to me? Describe Describe him to me. Ben onu tarif et. Biliyorsun ki uzun. He's tall. He's, he's got uh, long hair, uh, wide shoulders, uh, has muscles. And you describe it. Uh, you you do not talk about his personality. Whether he's a good man or a bad man, right? Or a bad man, or a stupid man, or a crazy man, right? You don't talk about his personality, you just describe him. No judgment. Got it? Yes. But when you press Y, that you be your first one. Use it. Surely a one does it. Think about like when you're ill, you go to the hospital, and the doctor is uh, prescribed some medicines, tablets. Uh, you, he said, okay, three times a day. You, got, you have to use, or you have to take these pills two times a day. You have to do it. You have to behave like that, like you were instructed. So, prescriptive grammar says you cannot use two negatives together in English language. You cannot say, for example, I never can't. You cannot do that. <laughs> Yes, but with rules. You say this is a rule, you should do that, you shouldn't do that. Okay, this is called prescriptive grammar. Got it? Then descriptive grammar, whereas you, you, you don't say that you have to use that, you have to obey this rule, you have to use this one, or you mustn't use this one. Okay, you just describe it. You say, okay, in uh, like in um, English language, you say you mustn't do it, or uh, you say you don't have to do it, 
Uh, or you say, I, I gotta do it, I gotta do it. So you here, in spoken English, you can see an example, a pattern of I gotta do it, I have to do it, I must, I must do it. But in prescript, prescriptive grammar, you don't say I gotta do it. You say I have to do it. You should say I have to or I need to or I must. See now the difference? Is it clear? Okay. So, uh, uh, question 11? Okay. So, guys, okay, the, the difference between assimilation and illusion. Assimilation, as it can be inferred from the word, uh, you assimilate it, you change the sound, you copy the sound of another sound. Like, I have to go. In spoken English, you say, I have. Instead of the, you copy the sound the, and you say, I have. And two, instead of two, you say, ta, I have ta, and then you say, go, I have to go. So you change the sound. Correct? You change the sound. Whereas, in the legion, you omit one segment of sound, you omit it, you don't pronounce it. Okay? This is called the legion. Like, just shut. You don't say, just shut up. You say, just shut up. Just, you omit t sound there. You and me, and a baby. You then, be sent, the baby. So, you and me, when you say you and me, you and me, this is you, you omit the d segment and you don't pronounce it, you don't say it, so you don't hear it. You and me. Or, you remember the example M and M? M and M and M. Right? 